Hey, family. Wow. It's a lot of um, seconds passed. Um, and I wanted to get into this video. This is part two of sex with, I like to say, high conflict individuals. You know, um, and the catalyst, of course, y'all know um, for me doing part two so fast is I watched Corey last night. Or the night before, whenever it was. And, and his uh, other co-host on there, Marcus, was talking about how crazy women have good sex. And I know y'all done heard that more on more than one occasion. Uh, <laughs> crazy people have good sex. Okay? And there might be some truth to that. Okay? Because... Uh, most people, uh, I guess, when they are charged up passionately, um, they 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 crazy, right? You under a spell. However, when we start talking about this kind of that that Marcus was talking about, he was talking about the women chase him. With uh, guns, he was going, and he's like, "Yeah, he liked to get them like that." Uh, and if they not, uh, one of them was going to take a whole bunch of pills. Oh my God! Yes, I'm laughing, of course, because it's so sick. And this is the stuff that we go through in our relationships, or when we think we're in love, or with somebody that hit the bottom, or somebody that skimmed the top, whatever it is that you like. <laughs> and you just become out of control, right? Some people have relationships. I had a crazy relationship one time, and the person liked to get burnt with cigarettes. I mean, what the hell? Start and see, because I didn't know what I know now, I was just like, damn, this is kind of crazy, ain't it? See, some people already have a, a crazy mechanism of button. They go, wait a minute. For me, this like might be a, gone a little bit too far. Where some people don't have that button. So anyway, when I was listening to Marcus talk about, um, you know, his uh, cohorts chasing him, his, uh, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. It was a little different than what uh, D said. D was like, okay, I, I, I saw my significant other who I thought was just seeing me. And, of course, he was riding in the car with another bitch. And I was so upset that I turned this car around and I chased him Uh and I was in a truck, and he was in a vehicle, a Ferrari. I was in, and I learned kind of like that wasn't the right thing to do. Well, that's totally different. Obviously, she had kids in the car, which was out of control because love will make you do some crazy things. Oh, my God. Ready? I've been riding down the car with somebody, and they jerk the wheel, you know, all kinds of craziness I've been involved with. And I think the only thing that kept me involved in the relationships was because the, the sex was just so intense. And it was so um, just, you know, I, I didn't understand what all this synergy and all this... Uh, Passion and whatever it was, what what is going on? So, to continue in the vein of part one of sex with borderlines and, and um, personality disorder individuals uh, by Doctor T at A Shrink for Men, uh, and it's 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 very interesting because it's a universal message. And because men don't talk about their abuse at all, uh, 
Dr. T decide to actually focus on the men. But that doesn't mean that this is exempt from women and people having these kind of influences in their lives. The, the thing is, get to where you can understand that some of the behavior you doing is not cool. Because I had to learn that for myself. I had to look at myself and say, am I this crazy? Some people don't have the ability to do that. Okay? And so that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to get right where you can say, damn, I used to do some crazy stuff. Or, damn, the way I lived right then, I don't want to live that way now. Or there was something incredibly dark about me not wanting to examine some of the things that I do, right? So, anyway, myths about amazing sex with borderlines and narcissists proliferate the internet. Sex with borderlines isn't amazing, contrary to urban legend. Same goes for sex with narcissists. To be clear, we're talking about individuals, emotionally and psychologically speaking, who haven't developed beyond childhood or adolescence, okay? As discussed in part one, many codependent clients confuse love bombing for love, intensity for intimacy, pathology for passion, and dovetailing psychological childhood wounds for sexual chemistry. Let me say that again. As discussed in part one, many codependent clients co clients confuse love bombing for love, intensity for intimacy, pathology for passion, and dovetailing psychological childhood wounds for actual sexual chemistry. How can sex be amazing when technique and performance-wise is just average or Really, really bad? <laughs> Short answer. Sex with borderlines and narcissists isn't really amazing. In fact, it's probably far from it. <coughs> Damn. Over-the-top porn star sex is sometimes part of love bombing. Okay. Alternately, the sex may be more pedestrian, liberally sprinkled with a lot of ego stroking bullshit. For example, you're only the second man I've been with. Uh, there's there's no one who's ever made me orgasm that way before. Or no one has ever loved me the way you have before. You're the best I've ever had. You're a real man. A real woman, not like my ex, whatever. Whatever the narcissist or borderline has done with you, trust me, they've done it before. They don't go from demure damsel dude or dude to screwing you behind a tavern dumpster on the first date because you're the one. No, not really. They don't. Why go through such extremes to seduce you into falling in love with them. Ask yourself, how does the borderline or narcissist define love? Hint, it's not how Merriam-Webster's dictionary uh, defines it. That's for sure. Remember, they are desperately wanting to be loved, but don't know how to love in return. I used to think when somebody said, oh, you never been loved to the so-and-so loved you. Yeah. Right. After years of doing this work, I've identified several repetitive, repetitive, repetitive thematic patterns regarding narcissists, borderlines, or in love. Um... Based on my anecdotal clinical experiences to love, love to a BPD means it's what people who love each other are to family. Keep the abuse secret, cover up, lie to me and tolerate, make excuses for my behavior. 
If you love me, you accept me unconditionally, without complaint, never hold me accountable. If you never expect to de or demand what I expect and demand from you, I do whatever I want and you do as I say. You take care of me forever, even if we're no longer together and it hurts you. When viewed through this lens, the intense urgency to love bomb you into loving them makes sense. I mean, if you love me, I can do whatever I want without consequence. If your narcissist partner or ex offered you a deal like this on the first date, would you have taken it? Probably not. But didn't you hear some version of one or more of these five statements for it of during the relationship? Furthermore, the person you fell for during the love bombing stage isn't really who they are. You fell in love with the borderline's false self or the narcissist's false self, not their true self. The person you ultimately divorced is the same person she has always been. You just didn't see it until that person became dependent on until you became dependent on them for a sense of worth and specialness. In other words, it's all about how the narcissist or borderline makes you feel, not how you feel about them. If it were the other way around, it'd be easier to walk away from the love bombing after the love bombing stops. Um, so, you know, you love the uh, personality disorder for loving you, and they love you for loving them. And that's because none of you got enough love during your childhood. It's intimacy, not intensity that you need. Intensity is a key feature of relationships with personality disorder men and women. These people in relationships, the proverbial volume is cranked to a hundred. Seems more colorful, music sounds more musical, tastes even tastier. Smells even seem smellier. Of course, I'm being sarcastic, but you get the idea. It's intense. As noted, Codependent clients describe sex with high personality disorder person as intense and amazing. Even when they can acknowledge that technically the same, the sex wasn't very good. Kind of like little kids who think Kraft macaroni and cheese or Doritos are at the top of the line in fine dining. You have an unsophisticated relationship palette. That's what that is. The personality disorder, smoke and mirror intensity, in reality, a case of really the emperor or the emperor's new clothes. What you believe you're seeing doesn't really exist. The intensity of their pathology adds to the intoxicating effects of the love bomb. And it isn't what happens when the borderline or narcissist reveals what lies beneath the mask of a false self. You finally see their seemingly splendor for what it is. A big fat nothing. Make mistake codependents make the big mistake that codependents make is continuing to insist that not that the non existent royal investment are real and that the ugly naked truth is false. Actually, you seeing it backwards. You are. It's the aura of intensity in surrounding the NPD, BPD individuals combined with mutual unresolved childhood relational issues that make the relationship seem faded and equally magical. In other words, unlike no other woman or man you could ever hope to meet again, Wow. This is ridiculous given how many codependent men and women I've counseled who've dated and are married more than one personality disorder partner. I guarantee you, your crazy isn't the only crazy out there. 
Many of the behaviors borderline and narcissists typically range, I mean, engage during the uh, a courtship stage are evidence in of pathology, not passion. For example, love bombing is pathological, not a measure of how much she or she is into you. Pretending to be someone that you aren't to deceive someone into caring about you is pathological. Pathological lying is pathological. Claiming to have suffered abuse and sexual assault to elicit sympathy is pathological. Both male and female codependents fancy themselves as heroes and fixers, which is also pathological. Having enormous having emotions and beliefs that change dramatically and quickly as is pathological. It's not normal to go from I love you to I hate you day to day, hour to hour, or minute to minute. Threatening suicide if you want to break up. Won't let her see your phone. Won't let her move in or give her a baby. For any reason, really, it's pathological. Not an indication of how much she really loves you. He or she. It's psychological, not sexual. So why do you think your narcissistic or borderline ex is the best you've ever been with? Even when your rational mind, I hope, knows better? As a throw up in your mouth, inducing as it is to contemplate the similarities between the NPD and the BPD, you consider the best in bed, and your equally toxic mother and or father contemplate it, and then contemplate it more. It's the equivalent of a psychological cold shower, isn't it? <laughs> Codependents are often attracted to narcissists and borderline partners as adults because they seem like the opposite of their similarly characterologically disturbed parents. So, during the love bombing stage, you experience what seems like adoration and acceptance that you didn't receive when you was a kid. Okay. That's why sex frequently feels so euphoric, as in, where have you been all my life? It can also make sex with the borderline or narcissist seem better than it actually is. Clients who continue to wax rest, um, rhapsody post relationships about sex with borderlines and narcissists are usually referring to the love bombing stage in most cases. And it's not so much the ex, the sex with the clients that they hooked on, but again, it's the way the narcissist or borderline made them feel about themselves. Wow. Wow. Deep. When asked to identify what was so amazing about the sex, they usually respond with, some clients were unable to do so and are painfully stuck, while others identify the whirlwind quality and mirroring of the love bombing as an amazing element. Others identify with what I refer to as the porn star theatrics, and that's just what it is, theatrics. Damn. This is nothing more than psychological illusion and self-delusion. It's too good to be true, albeit false intimacy, false mirror, and emotional attunement intensified by a mutual, unresolved childhood issue and an orgasm. Viola! Voila! <laughs> Voila! Amazing sex. At first, the narcissist or borderline soothes the old insecurities and wounds your parents inflicted. These are the same insecurities and wounds they attack later. You feel special and needed in ways you may not have experienced before. 
loved in ways you didn't feel loved as a child, or you feel special and needed by trying to fix, rescue the BPD part like you did your parents. As a parent, five is a parent to five child. Neither scenario is healthy. Sex with borderlines or narcissists doesn't seem so amazing because of the sex. It's the result of an old emotional psychological baggage you've been carrying around since childhood. And disconcerting and unbelievable as this may be to you, isn't that better than torturing yourself with the ridiculous notion that you'll never be able to experience love and intimacy like you did with the person who abused you in the first place? So horribly. Well, it isn't. Again, y'all, Dr. T um, works with individuals through her uh, relationship and codependency issues. Um, and it's interesting to check out. I mean, whether you um, ever delved into this kind of stuff or not, it's very important. Because I wanted to figure out how somebody could just drop me at the drop of a hat. And split they self to a point where the same day that you love me is the same day you hate me and leave me. That is insane. And then I start looking at a pattern. Oh, if you leave a job or if you stop doing this, you always want to leave a person in a bad situation. You always want to leave somebody where they're hanging. That's not a good quality. And so when I begin to observe these things and when I begin to try to express these things, not only to somebody that can't communicate very well, well, now I'm ex doing things that's now starting to remind me of the behavior that I really am start that I'm loathing. I don't know. How many of y'all have taken the time to take the post of your own behavior in your love life? With the people that you're in a relationship with. With your family. Some pathologies can't be fixed. Some can. Whichever way it does. I wish you good luck. Uh, take care of yourself. And leave your comments below. About what you think. About these behaviors. Um, it's very interesting. So I'll see y'all in the next video. Leave your comments below. And if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share. And join the channel. Uh, donate to the channel. Hit the Cash app. Donate to the channel. Hit the notification button so you'll get the videos when they drop. And we'll see you in the next one.